Ever wondered why bugs in their final moments decide to break dance? Well, it's a curious spectacle, isn't it? Bugs flipping over onto their backs, legs twitching in a strange rhythmic dance. It's almost like they're performing a last waltz. But rest assured, there's more to this peculiar behavior than just a morbid insect boogie. It's rooted in science, believe it or not. Stay tuned as we unravel this mystery that has puzzled many a nature enthusiast. Did you know that bugs are more complex than they appear to be? Let's dive right into the intricate world of bug anatomy, focusing on their exoskeleton and legs. Bugs, or insects as they are scientifically known, belong to the phylum Arthropoda. This means they are invertebrates with an external skeleton or an exoskeleton. This exoskeleton is like their personal suit of armor offering protection, but it also provides structure much like our own skeletons do for us. This exoskeleton is tough and rigid but also flexible allowing bugs to move around with ease. But unlike our bones which are on the inside, the bug's skeleton is on the outside. And that makes a world of difference when it comes to the bug's final bow. Now let's move on to the legs. Bugs have six legs, each with several joints. These joints or articulations are areas where the exoskeleton has been modified to allow movement. Just like in our own bodies, muscles inside the bug's body control these movements. However, here's the kicker. When a bug dies, these muscles can no longer contract or relax. This means the bug's legs stiffen up, locked in whatever position they were in at the time of death. And this, my friends, is where things start to get interesting. You see, due to the way a bug's legs are structured with most of the mass being concentrated in the body, when the bug dies and its legs stiffen, it can cause the bug to flip over onto its back. The stiff legs act like a lever, and the bug's heavy body acts as the load, causing this flip. So when you see a dead bug lying on its back, it's not because it decided to take a final skyward gaze or practice its backstroke. It's simply a result of the bug's unique anatomy and the laws of physics coming into play. So it's not just an impromptu breakdance, there's science behind this too. Ever heard of rigor mortis? No, it's not a spell from Harry Potter. It's a term that refers to the stiffness that occurs in the body after death. This isn't just a human phenomenon, it affects bugs too. Let's break it down a bit. The term rigor mortises comes from Latin and literally translates to stiffness of death. Kind of morbid, isn't it? But it's just a natural process that happens after life ends. In the case of our little six-legged friends, rigor mortis plays a significant role in why they end up on their backs. When a bug dies, the muscles in its body start to contract. This happens because the bug's body stops producing adenosine triphosphate or ATP. ATP is like the fuel for our muscles, it's what allows them to relax after they've contracted. Without ATP, the muscles stay in a contracted state, causing stiffness, which, in the bug world, is a one-way ticket to backflip city. Now imagine you're a bug, you've got these long, spindly legs sticking out from your body. As rigor mortis sets in, your legs stiffen and contract. Given that a bug's legs are often longer than its body, this contraction causes an imbalance. The legs, acting like an involuntary springboard, flip the bug onto its back, and voila! You've got yourself a bug doing its best impression of a stargazing enthusiast. Remember, bugs are not designed to be upside down. They don't have the necessary strength or mechanics to flip themselves back over. So, once they're on their back, it's game over. It's like wearing a turtle shell on a mountain hike, only to fall and get stuck on your back, except in this case, there's no helpful passerby to flip you back over, so the next time you see a bug on its back remember it's not doing the worm, it's just rigor mortis. Who knew that bugs could be such drama queens? Now, we're delving into the intriguing world of bug defense mechanisms, specifically their penchant for playing dead, often on their backs, to fend off predators. Imagine you're a hungry bird, and you spot a juicy bug. You swoop down, ready for your next meal, but suddenly, the bug flips over and plays dead. You're taken aback. Is it really dead? Is it safe to eat? While you're pondering these questions, the bug makes its escape. This is the art of thanatosis or death feigning, a common strategy in the insect world. This is not just a simple case of bugs being overly dramatic, it's a survival tactic honed over millions of years. When a bug flips onto its back and plays dead, it's taking advantage of a predator's instinctive hesitation. Many predators prefer live prey, so a seemingly lifeless bug is less appealing. What's more, the bug's underside is often less colorful and harder to see than its top half. By flipping onto its back, the bug is essentially putting on its invisibility cloak, blending into the background and making it less likely to be spotted by a predator. 
But, there's more to this story. Some bugs take their act to the next level. Certain types of beetles, for instance, release foul-smelling substances when they play dead, further deterring predators. It's like they're saying, not only am I dead but I also stink. You definitely don't want to eat me. In the world of bugs, being a drama queen is a matter of life and death. It's a game of survival, and the stakes couldn't be higher. So the next time you see a bug on its back, remember, it's not just being dramatic, it's employing a clever strategy honed over millennia to evade its predators. So bugs aren't just great at hide-and-seek, they're also masters of deception. Bugs might just have the worst hangover experience. Imagine having a night out, indulging a bit too much, and waking up the next morning feeling like your head is about to explode. Now multiply that feeling by a hundred, and you're close to what a bug goes through when it encounters pesticides. Pesticides, in essence, are nerve gases designed to target the nervous systems of bugs. They are like the party crashers of the insect world, they show up uninvited and ruin everything. When bugs come into contact with these chemicals, it's like they've had one too many at the bar, and their bodies start to react in a pretty wild way. You see, the nervous system of bugs is rather complex, it's like a tiny, intricate network of highways all buzzing with activity. When pesticides enter the scene they are like roadblocks on these highways, disrupting the smooth flow of traffic. This disruption affects the normal functioning of the bug's body, leading to involuntary spasms and convulsions. These spasms can be so intense that they literally flip the bugs onto their backs. It's like that one friend we all have who after a few drinks starts doing backflips in the middle of the dance floor. Only in this case the dance floor is a garden, and the backflips are not exactly voluntary. What's even worse is that these pesticides don't just cause a one-time hangover. They continue to affect the bugs long after the initial exposure, leading to a prolonged state of paralysis. It's a hangover that just doesn't seem to end, and it eventually results in the bug's death. So the next time you see a bug lying on its back, remember this, it's not just playing dead or taking a nap, it's likely that it's had a run-in with a pesticide, and it's now suffering from the worst hangover imaginable. Pesticides giving bugs the worst morning after since, well forever. So, why do bugs lie on their backs, it's not just for the fun of it. Let's recap what we've learned so far. First we delved into the fascinating world of bug anatomy. You see, bugs legs are like our arms and legs, they work best when pushing against something, when a bug is on its back it can't get enough leverage to flip over. It's like trying to do a push-up while floating in space and we all know how that would turn out. Then we talked about rigor mortis, that stiff, unyielding state that affects all creatures after death, bugs included. It sets in, causing their legs to contract, and voila, they end up on their backs, waving their legs like they're trying to flag down a taxi. Next came the concept of predatory deterrent. Some bugs play possum, pretending to be dead to avoid becoming a snack. I mean, who wants to eat something that's already dead and on its back, right? Lastly, we took a look at the impact of pesticides. These chemicals affect a bug's nervous system, causing spasms that often result in them flipping onto their backs. It's not exactly the best way to go, but hey, it's effective. So the next time you see a bug flipped on its back, remember, it's not just a bug, it's a drama queen with a complex anatomy undergoing rigor mortis, possibly faking death or having a pesticide hangover.